Let's say you need to create a newsletter for the company you work for. Not a problem. You can create many types of documents, including newsletters with Word. You can use one of Word's templates, or you can create one on your own. I'm actually working on a newsletter right now for Cityville High School. I decided not to use a template because I wanted to design the newsletter myself this time. I've already entered my text, but now I need to make some changes and additions to the document before it's ready. Currently, my newsletter is in landscape format. This means that everything on the page is oriented horizontally. I think I really want to change my newsletter so that the orientation is more vertical. To change the page orientation, all I need to do is select the Page Layout tab and then click the Orientation command in the Page Setup group. I only have two options here. Just left click Portrait and now our newsletter will appear in a vertical format. I thought I was going to have more information for this month's newsletter, so I plan on printing it on an 8.5 by 14 legal size sheet of paper. But it turns out there really wasn't that much news this month. Let's change the paper size. All we need to do is make sure we're on the Page Layout tab. Now left click the Size command and a drop down menu will appear. You can see that the legal size is selected and that I have a lot more to choose from. There are several different paper sizes, envelopes, and even more paper sizes that don't appear in the list. I want to change my newsletter to the standard letter size, which is 8.5 by 11 inches, so all I need to do is left click it. Now we can see that my page size has changed we were able to get rid of the extra white space. I know that I'll need to format my margins as I continue to design the newsletter, but I probably should go ahead and change my margins. I really want them to be a little bigger so that the text isn't so close to the edge of the page. To change the page margins, make sure you are on the Page Layout tab. Click the Margins command. A menu of options appears. Let's see. Right now I'm using narrow, which means there are half inch margins on each side of the document. Let's change that to normal, which will give us one inch margins on each side. To change the size, just left click the margin size you want. If you don't see what you want, you can always click the margins command and then select custom margins from the list. This opens the page setup dialog box where you can manually enter margins. Let's see, I do want one inch margins on both sides, but a half inch margin on the top would be nice. Let me just make that change and click OK. OK, things are looking pretty good so far. There is one more thing I want to do. I really want to draw attention to the first news item about the teacher of the year. It really is the main article. There are a lot of ways you can emphasize things. I want to make this news item a section of its own so that formatting the document is easier. To do this, I need to insert a break into the document. Okay, stay with me here. Breaks can be confusing, but I think once we talk through the types of breaks, you'll understand how you can use them. In most cases, formatting symbols don't automatically show. You have to tell Word to reveal them while you are editing your document. To do this, go back to the Home tab, locate the Paragraph group, and select the Show Hide command. When I left click this command, it reveals paragraph and formatting symbols. Now, to insert a break, the first thing you need to do is put your insertion point where you want the break to appear. Now, make sure the Page Layout tab is selected, and then click Breaks. Don't let the menu that appears confuse you. There are many types of breaks. We want to use a continuous break. See it says Insert a Section Break and Start a New Section on the same page. That's what we want to do. I want to keep all my text on the same page, but I just want Teacher of the Year to be in its own section of the page. Just left click it. See how the section break appeared in the document? I bet you're curious as to all those other breaks and what they're for. 
We won't be using any of them in this document, but let's take a look at them anyway. You can insert a page break into a document if you want certain text to appear on a page. When a page is full, text will automatically flow to the next page. But there may be times when you want to do this manually. A column break can be used when you organize text into columns and want certain text to appear in a specific column. As you can see, there are a lot of other types of breaks. The easiest way for you to learn what each one of these is is to read the description and then insert that type of break into a document you're working with. That way, you can see how the break affects the text. Give the various break styles and other page setup options a try. You'll learn a lot by practicing with the commands on your own. Good luck!